Welcome back everyone to What Is This Weapon with me, Jonathan Ferguson. Some of the things that we choose for this series uh, kind of come out of, of nowhere. Uh, this is one of them. So I happen to be looking at the old, well, not that old actually, uh, UK TV drama Utopia, which is fantastic. I thoroughly recommend it. Wasn't convinced by the um, Amazon remake, but anyway. Um, obviously with doing what I do, I'm forever... Uh, boring my wife to death by pointing out discrepancies and weird things and interesting things in movies and TV shows. We all, you, you're probably all the same sort of people. I hope you are. So, something I spotted, uh, or rather, no, I, somebody else on the internet was saying, what is this? And my initial thought was, well, that's obviously a Browning high power. And then I realised that I was wrong and it was something more interesting. So, I immediately rushed to the drawers here at the Royal Armouries to see if we had one, and we sort of did. Now the pistol that I saw in this, in this uh, screen grab from, from this TV show didn't quite resemble either of these. It's somewhere in the middle. So we're looking here at a, a design lineage, uh, and it's no different whether you're looking at flintlock muskets and their stylistic and functional evolution over time versus copies of a famous pistol. Um, you can apply the same kind of analytical um, skills and check the collection, check the archives, promotional material, old websites, that kind of thing, because we're looking at the modern era here, and try to work out where things sit. Now, so this one, pretty obviously, is almost a straight up Browning High Power Mark II, Mark III. Um, the big difference I spotted well, the thing, that, the thing that let me identify what it was are the markings on the slide. I'll come to that in a second. The, apart from a couple of changes to the shape of the frame, which aren't embodied on this, so this is closer to the high power, uh, the big difference were the slide serrations here. So there aren't as many of them, and they're further apart. Means nothing for you as the user, pretty much, but um, might make manufacturing a bit easier, slightly easier, depending on what processes you're, you're using, but clearly uh, the makers of this decided that they would go for that. Um, this, is, this has got rubber wraparound grips on them, not uncommon, in the, especially in the 90s. Spoiler alert, these are from the 90s. And they are the grips made uh, by, uh, well, the KSN Industries, who are an Israeli company who produced the Karine series of pistols, which are Browning High Power copies as well, and derivatives. And some of theirs are much closer to the Browning High Power than the thing I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, let me just quickly grab you a quote-unquote real Browning High Power from our collection. Now, this is a, an instructional armourer's cutaway because this is a British Army L9A1, but it is a Browning High Power as well. And you can see that it has the standard Browning, um, more numerous and closely spaced, more typical really, slide serrations for that grip, grasp if you like. Um, yeah, the, the cutaways are great because you can see how the gun works without having to figure it out in your head. So we have these two shaped lugs here, they lock into the slide so it's all one unit for a very short period of travel, enough for pressure to drop down to that safe level that you, you require and then they're no longer locked together and the slide can come all the way back get rid of the empty case, come forward and load the next round. So we, we do love cutaways. Uh, but you can tell this is a, a magazine safety, of course. Uh, you can tell that this is a, a military, British military weapon. Classic black sun chlorite paint. Um, but they, are, they were still made by FN in Belgium. So they have FN markings and it has the NATO store number on the frame. So uh, very much a military pistol, uh, but very, very similar to the Mark II slash three commercial high power that this is based upon. Now, you're probably wondering by this point, who the heck made this thing, if not FN, this thing. So the other thing, I was able to zoom right in on this high-res image, and exactly as on this one, it had uh, caliber 9mm Parabellum in that slightly weird font, and it had Ranger in quotation marks. So this is a Ranger pistol, and it is a British company but the question mark is over where they were actually manufactured. Um, 
manufacturing of small arms in the UK, even in the early 90s, was not, you know, there weren't too many people doing it, and it was often easier to uh, farm out the manufacturing to, to subcontractors, essentially. They might well be assembled in the UK, but the main assemblies, main components would be made elsewhere, and I believe that's what happened here. And the story gets a little clearer, clearer when we come to the next one. But yeah, that ranger marking. If you ever see a ranger on there, that refers to uh, Mick Ranger, who ran Imperial Defence Services, which was a UK-based uh, arms company. So, skipping the one that I keep talking about that you can't see, um, watch Utopia, it's brilliant. We come to this slightly sort of space age looking Browning high power derivative. So it has all the features of the high power. You can see the lineage of the frame and of the slide. The grips on this are, are standard, um, early-ish Browning high power checkered plastic grips. But a lot has changed. We have a, a little a change in the profile of the slide back here. The angles on it are different. The whole thing is more angular. Um, rem reminds you perhaps more of a CZ75 or something, but it isn't. Well, that's a parallel development of the Browning High Power. Very distinctive trigger guard with these sort of curves to it. Um, the safety, the pointedness of the safety is, is a little bit sort of diagnostic, as it were, as well. And you have this very steep, flat angle on the back of the pistol, uh, which I believe was on the, the missing one <laughs> in this story. So um, this one that I talked to you just now about, dating these things is, is, is difficult except for proof marks. The great thing about the UK is that, well, and Europe actually, is that we proof mark things. So um, I wasn't going to show you because it's very tiny, but you might just be able to see on the barrel there, proof marks, and they have a date code, a two letter date code. So this one, I don't know if it's too tiny or not, but it actually is, it's the crossed uh, scepters and uh, XC either side. So the XC is a date code for 1995. So we know that this was made, well, we know that it was proofed and very probably made in 1995. Then the missing one and then this thing. And the date code on this one is ED. ED is, these are both Birmingham Proof House codes, by the way. ED is a code for 2002. So between 1995 and 2002, this thing has transformed somewhat. But the story is more complicated than that because there seems to be quite a lot of overlap. There was a, the fairly stock high power replica stayed in, in or, um, copy, sorry, stayed in production. And this was a sort of an option. And then we can bring this, hopefully, all the way home <laughs> and point out the marking on the slide where it says on this one, it says made in England, again, assembled in England, but it's Arcus Ranger. This is the Arcus hyphen Ranger pistol. And Arcus is a Bulgarian man firearms manufacturer. I believe they manufacture other things as well, but they have also made firearms, notably pistols. And this is pretty close to the Arcus 94, which if you have a dig around online, you might, you might see examples of. It's not, not exactly the same, but it's close to the, uh, very close indeed, to the earlier uh, form of the Arcus 94. It looks to have evolved itself over time and, and moved a little bit further away from this. But this is explicitly made by Arcus for Ranger, um, made in England in the sense that it's put together in England, but all the individual components have been machined uh, really rather well in Bulgaria. Right, well that's it guys, really. That's, it's quite a straightforward story. You've got the British company, Imperial Defence Services, bringing to market one of a number of copies of the Browning High Power Pistol in the early to mid 90s as far as we can tell, certainly by the mid 90s. And then it evolves in, in concert with the company Arcus into something closer to what Arcus themselves were producing. Um, and the blank in the middle Brings us back to my original spot uh, on, on Reddit. Uh, you probably know who you are if you're watching this, where you asked what, what this was. And it's just a, a really fascinating way into our own collection, 
really. Um, if we can, we'll be acquiring that missing link in this, you know, it's quite, a, quite a minor story in the scheme of things, but uh, it's of interest to us. And I was fascinated as to why the, the armourers for Utopia chose that particular pistol. But the answer is pretty straightforward. It's a British-made, British-sold product. Um, it's just as likely, if not more, that they would have that in their armoury available for, for hire for use on a TV show, as it is that they would have an FN original. OK, that's the guns out of the way. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Uh, we have our usual social media channels to, to check out, our three museum sites. Hopefully you know all that by now. What's in front of me here is a little bit of a, uh, a moonlight for me, I suppose. But I have in my time been an edge weapons person as well. Uh, edge weapons people amongst you will recognise this as probably an, uh, as an oak shot type 14. It's a 13th century design, very broad, uh, broad but quite thin blade. I've always liked them. And this is actually from our new range of reproduction swords from our own collection, which is really exciting. Uh, so we've worked with uh, Windlass, the, the sword company, and with Matt Easton over at Scholar Gladiatoria. Hi, Matt. Uh, to produce a range of, I believe, half a dozen really nice replicas or reproductions, if you will, from our collection. So this is a reproduction of Class 9, 2141, um, found in a peat bog, and it's really very good, I think. And I hope you think too. So the, 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 quite, a, quite a broad range over a, the sort of medieval period in this uh, range of swords. Go, go and check them out on our, on our shop website. One little detail on this I might like to, you might like to see. So on the blade is um, a sort of motto or, or uh, inscription, Toto. Now it's on both sides twice. And on the original, that's a little bit indistinct. So we're not quite sure if it's Ioto or Toto, and I'm not enough of an expert on swords to tell you what that might mean. Answers in the comments or from my colleagues when they see this and roll their eyes at me. So check out that range. Uh, I'm quite excited about it, and I'll have to try very hard to resist to not get one for myself. <laughs>